What do you want, asshole? Lauren, is everything all right? She's just swell. Now beat it, loser! You again? If you're looking for trouble, you found it. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Oh! Get asshole. Are you all right? Better than him, I guess. Who is he? An ex-client who thinks he owns me. He was getting violent, and I told him I didn't want to see him anymore. Well, you should be careful. He'll probably be back. Sorry about the mess. Mr. Shelby? Yeah. Thanks. Zone is sectioned off, sir. Please step back. Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. You got a badge or something, Mr. Jaden? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Check. You can pass. I'm looking for Lieutenant Blake. Is he around? I saw him arrive earlier. He's here somewhere. Thanks. trembling. I gotta keep my act together. At least for now. Video memo recording. Agent 47023, Norman Jaden. Tuesday, October 4th, 2011. The time is 8.14 a.m. Soaking wet. Well. 
way too many people here. They're trampling all over the crime scene. Some orchid pollen. The concentration of pollen in the air is quickly decreasing because of the rain, but it gets higher in the direction of the body. The body is still very common. Pollen particles disappear in the tall grass. It's probably the end of the trail. Very common. Traces of blood on the railroad track. The blood report indicates an advanced and long-lasting state of exhaustion. Footprints continue just after the pollen trail. There's a good chance that they're the killers. Traces of blood detected on the fence behind the railroad line. a good chance that they're the killers. Harry Conan. Tire tracks on the side of the boat behind the railroad line. It may be the killer's car. There's a railroad track near where the body is lying. Same as all the other victims. I've got to find Lieutenant Carter Blake. Blake, I'm Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI. I went by your office this morning. They told me you'd be here. Now, if you're looking for rain, dead bodies, and highways, you come to the right place. Mike, will you tell that asshole with the bulldozer to stop for five minutes? I can't hear myself. Thank you. Right away, Lieutenant. Well, are you coming, Jaden? So, what happened? 
Some guy taking his dog for a piss found a body about 6 o'clock this morning. We don't know much more right now. Based on what we've seen, looks like the work of the origami killer. Has the time of death been established? Based on the rigor mortis, must be less than six hours ago. We should know more once the coroner has had a look. Any news on the coroner? He's on his way, Lieutenant. We've been waiting for an hour, for fuck's sake. Any witnesses? None yet. Given the neighborhood, I'd be surprised if anybody saw anything. Has the body been identified? No, not yet. We should know more later today. Do we know the cause of death? There are no marks on the body. Chances are he was drowned, like the others. Tony, I don't want to see a single shit-stirring journalist within a mile of here. You got it? Yes, Lieutenant. The case seems to be attracting the attention of the media. Yeah, a greedy pack of vultures. These guys have killed their mothers for a scoop. Some investigation. You come in a three-ring circus. Listen, I, I'm a little busy here. Why don't we discuss all this a little later, back at the office? Well, no problem. I understand. Do you mind if I have a look around? Be my guest. Hey, Jade. Come and see me if you find anything, okay? We're on the same team now. Strange character, that Blake. Didn't seem too pleased to see me. Why the hell is there blood here? The body is still here. Harry comment, the victim is lying on his back. No visible signs of violence. His face is covered with mud, like the other victims. An orchid was placed on the victim's chest. A small origami figure in the right hand. Fingers were probably closed after the time of death. The victim is Jeremy Bowles, declared missing five days ago. See reference file. Superficial wound on the right thigh. The blood is identical to that on the fence. I think I've seen all there is to see. Uh, I think I've seen enough. Better get back to the station before I catch pneumonia. I'm gonna leave. I see you in the office, right? Okay. See you later. Impressive. Seems the only traces the killer left are those he intended to leave. He knew exactly what he was doing. Right down to the tiniest detail.
a bat. A wolf's head. A crab. Death. Death. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? He's a very solitary kid, you know, very focused within himself. He's really close to his mother. With me, he's more distant. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I feel sort of anesthetized, as if none of this was real. Sometimes I tell myself this whole thing is just a nightmare and that I'll wake up at any moment. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? I sometimes have these blackouts, times when I don't know what I'm doing. I recover consciousness sometime later, but I'm someplace else, and I have no idea how I got there. Do you think this could be related to the accident? You suffered a massive concussion and were in a coma for six months. We really don't know what effect a shock like that can have on the brain. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. things go at school today? The teacher yelled at me for being late again. She's gonna send me home the next time it happens. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? Is something the matter, Sean? No, I'm all right. Aren't you going to go play with the other kids? I don't feel like it. I haven't been on a seesaw in a long time. What do you think? Yeah! Ha <laughs> <laughs>
He seems to be having fun. It's been a long time since I've seen that smile. What about that merry-go-round? I bet I can push you so fast you won't be able to stay on it. Great! Training for astronauts, though. <laughs> I'll find something else to do with him. Come back. Can I give it a try? You did it, Dad. Do you want to give it a try? I won't be able to do it. Oh, come on, let's try together. Now, the main thing is to get the right position at the beginning. Now, you've got to throw it straight and a little to the right. Now, throw it! Good job, Sean. See? That wasn't so hard. Hmm. Looks like rain's coming. I think you better go. Okay. You know, sometimes I remember before, I mean, when Jason was still here, sometimes I wish everything could just be the way it was before. Me too, Sean. Me too. Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's a dollar. Sean looks happy. I wish I could see him like that more often. I want to get back to being the kind of father I used to be.
Do you think it's gonna take long? No, he should be finished soon. I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. Oh, cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course. We've been expecting you. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no, it's fine. I just have to get to the press conference. We have them every day now. Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell them. Fortunately, today we have some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get him well together. Do you know how to tie a knot in a necktie? I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press... They're all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it, it's none of my business. No, of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're gonna have to serve him up on a silver platter. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, go see Charlie and she'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. I saw Blake when I arrived. Maybe I should go talk to him. I'm ready to start. Maybe we should kick off by talking about the case? I have some work to finish here. Let's talk about that later, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, no problem. Just let me know when you're available. Captain Perry is doing his press conference now. Might be interesting to have a look. I'm really starting to dislike that guy. Better watch my back from now on. Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time, and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like. We're still a few dollars short. Sorry, I... I don't have any chance. No problem. Maybe next time round. Captain Perry said you could show me to my office? Yes, of course. Follow me. This? This is my office? That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay. 
Time to work. Wow. More like a bit cupboard. Well, I wanted a quiet place to work, and it certainly looks like I got it. Step one, change the office. Eight victims in the last three years. All boys, aged between nine and 13. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later. Drowned in rainwater. There is always a railroad line adjacent to where the bodies are found. And all the victims disappeared in the fall. The killer has a large comfort zone. He gained confidence rapidly and moved away from his base. Hmm, this won't make the geo-profiling any easier. Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found, which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned. Over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He is intelligent, calm, and determined. An organized type. He has a car. He's probably employed, but his work allows him free time. This car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83. No prints or specific clues. Hmm. Nothing much to go on. Just one origami store in town. Hmm, a 
common species. That doesn't help much. The orchid is a common species. It can be found at any flower shop. my face. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. That's all. I... I... I gotta hang on. I can beat this. Is everything all right, sir? This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marsh. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... 4.15. Yeah, that's it, 4.15. I remember exactly, because I looked at the clock in the park when we arrived. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. A beige coat. And a pair of pants. Green pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I went for a short walk around the park, just for a few minutes. When I got back, the carousel had stopped, and Sean wasn't there. You say you took your son to the park after school, but you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I searched the whole neighborhood for him. I, I thought he couldn't have gone far. Did Sean have any particular difficulties, Mr. Mars? Anything that might have caused him to run away? Sean is a sensitive child. Our relationship has been a little difficult recently. Everything okay at school? Any particular problems between you and your wife? Uh, my wife and I have been separated for the last six months. But Sean would not have gone off without telling his mother or me. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... 
Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Did they find something? No, nothing yet, but they're gonna keep looking through the night. Do they... do they think it's the origami killer? It, it, it's still too early to say... ...but it is a possibility. What happened, Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him! I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? I'm sorry. That's not what I meant to say. Good evening. Good evening to you, sir. Can I help you, sir? Well, I hope so. My name's Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. Uh, I'm investigating the case of the origami killer. I I'd like to ask you a few questions. My son is dead, Mr. Shelby. I have nothing more to say. I also lost someone I loved. I know what you're feeling. Then you will understand that I do not wish to talk about it. You may know something that could help save other people's lives. I was unable to save the life of my own son. I do not see how I could save the lives of other people. Oh, do you sell inhalers? I'm all out and at least I won't go away completely empty-handed. In the back of the store, to the right. Thanks. Then he didn't want to talk. Might have known something. Good evening, sir. Are you looking for something in particular? Give me what you got in the register. Don't fucking try anything. Open the register, you dumb fuck! Put the money on the counter! Shit, are you deaf or what? My gun. Are you gonna open that fucking register? <sighs> Left in the car. Gotta think of something else. Steal that money from me. I have worked very hard to earn it. You cannot have it. What did you say? You're out of your fucking mind, man! You don't get it, do you? I'm gonna put a fucking bullet right between your eyes if you don't do what I say now! Shall not be robbing my register, sir. That money is mine. I ask you now to leave before it is too late. Christ, goddamn idiot! Open the register! Don't make me fucking kill you! No, sir. That I cannot do! Turn around. What's his problem? Waste you, man. I ain't joking. <laughs> goddamn <I swear>. prick. <clears throat> Punk. Didn't give me any choice. A thousand thank you, sir. I don't know what would have happened if you had not been here. Well, 
This I didn't come by for nothing. Have a nice day. When my boy, Razor, disappeared, I received a letter with a locker ticket inside. Inside the locker, I found this box. I do not understand what it means, but I think it must be a sort of message from the man who took my son from me. Can I? Please, take the box if it can be of any use to you at all. It did not help me to save Rezal, but maybe it will help you find the other little boy. Mr. Shelby, I was beginning to think that there was no good to be found in this place. I can see now that I was wrong. Thank you.